Hey guys, Sarah from Aaron's Outdoor, and in today's video, I'm gonna be going through uh, my new fish finder and just kind of showing the full setup. Um, you know how I mounted the fish finder and how I mounted the transducer, and then I'm gonna take it out on the water for the first time and see if it's working properly, and also do a little bit of fishing. So to start off, I'm gonna show you the fish finder and uh, you know how I set it up and everything. All right, and here's the fish finder I decided to get. It's a Garmin Striker 4. Um, I think the exact model is the Garmin Striker 4 Plus CV. There's a, a few different ones. Um, I ended up going with this one. And so basically, I wanted to do an in-hole transducer, but that didn't really work out. And the clear view feature, which is kind of the you know main feature this one comes with that the other ones don't, um, wasn't working well with the in-hole transducer. It actually wasn't really working at all. So because the in-hole transducer didn't work, I decided to make this a little arm uh, for my transducer to go off the side of my kayak because I didn't really want to have the transducer just drilled into the bottom of my kayak because I you know, throw this thing in the bed of my truck, I drag it around um, whenever I'm fishing with it. So I wanted, to have, I wanted to have something that I could easily like detach and this definitely is pretty easy to, to detach. So the way I attach it to my kayak is I just got these two little paddle holders um, or I think they're called paddle clips. They're made by Yak Gear and I got them at Academy um, for like 10 bucks. So that wasn't too expensive. And that just holds the PVC pipe in place, uh, which is, I did spray paint black just so it matched my kayak a little bit better. And those clips do keep it in place fairly well, but I also drilled um, a hole straight through um, this PVC pipe right here. And then I also drilled a hole like under into the kayak right there so that this little tent stake can just go through all those holes and it helps uh, keep this arm in place and it prevents it from like wobbling side to side and if I had been paddling um, you know fairly fast it would probably make the transducer arm go like that well it would bend up even more but it won't bend up that much because of the bucket it's in uh, but this little tent stake will prevent it from doing that and I think that's gonna be pretty good that's kinda something I came up with I got those little paddle clips from uh, another video on YouTube but the way I uh, mounted, or uh, the way I'm store giving power to this thing is through this little 12 volt battery I got at Bass Pro. Uh, it's just a Cabela's rechargeable 12 volt battery. And yes, it does say Cabela's, but like Bass Pro owns Cabela's, so they sell this at Bass Pro also. And I put it in this little waterproof box I got from Walmart for $10. I'm not going to go into too in depth um, on this right here, but basically I just like drilled a hole in the side of it. And that's where I put um, the wire through to go through there, and I sealed it up with silicone. But I'll have a video, or the, a link to a video, another YouTube video that kind of goes more in depth than I got this idea from uh, for that, if you want to do that um, for this little sonar. So anyway, that's pretty much what I have to share. It's just, I think this little PVC pipe is going to be nice, because you can just unclip this whole thing really easily and just, you know, take it out. Uh, which is really nice because for me I really just didn't want to have something permanent because I'm, I'm really not always going to use this like when I'm creek fishing I'm probably not even, not even going to use the sonar because you just don't really need it for creek fishing but now I'm going to turn it on real quick to show you what it looks like oh there we go all right so the traditional sonar just kind of looks like that um, obviously it's like it's less than a foot um, in that bucket it will actually it says 4.3 feet so yeah I don't know if that's right it's being a little weird. I think it's just not going to work quite properly in the bucket. Then that's just a traditional sonar. It also has this like clear view and traditional um, that you can do. This is a clear view. That's your tradi traditional. But anyway, that's enough of that. We're going to go out to the lake and actually test it out and see what it looks like when it's mapping the bottom of the lake. All right, well, as you can see, I'm at the lake now, and my kayak is right behind me there. I've already got the fish finder set up. Haven't turned it on yet, but hopefully it'll work and hopefully we'll be able to catch some fish. All right, here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna try to turn this thing on. It's taking a minute. There we go. Okay, let's see if it, it'll work. I don't know what that is. It seems like it's not doing it quite right, but we'll have to see. I'm just gonna paddle out a little. All right, so it looks like the first few feet are kind of messed up. Oh, we might have just passed over some fish or something, but I don't know what's going on with this sonar. Um, for the most part, it's accurate. It's just that first two feet, it 
it's showing something weird, so hopefully that goes away, but I, but I don't know, I guess we'll find out. Uh, let's see, I might switch to, actually I'll just go just to clear view. Let's see what this looks like. So this does seem like it's working better. And this is the view that's supposed to show like the bottom a little bit better, which is just flat right here, so it's not, you know, showing much, but if there was say like a sunken boat, it would show the sunken boat pretty well, or if there's an underwater tree, it would show that pretty well, uh, you know, better than the traditional sonar. So I think I might just put this on traditional and clear view. That way I can see the structure and I can see where the fish are, are gonna be. Okay, and to start off today, I'm just using this little uh, 2.8 inch Kitek Swing Impact Fat. It's a great little swim bait that uh, is really good for just catching numbers. And there's actually crappie in this lake. Um, last time I was here, I caught a few crappie, and that was the first time I've ever caught crappie here. It was on the same lure. But uh, bass will definitely hit this too. There's a fish. That was my second cast. And it's a tiny little bass. There we go. I don't know if I really, you know, the sonar really helped me catch this one, but. Um, we are putting this guy on a stringer today. Um, the guy that lets me fish here wants me to take some of these fish out because they do have like just a ton of like small bass in here and when you ever have, whenever you have too many small bass you want to take some out so that they can get larger. So anyway, I'm going to put this guy on a stringer. He's really small. I mean the average size is definitely bigger than this but we'll definitely run into some small ones. There's one. Oh my goodness, this one's tiny. Dude, how did this fish bite it? You're kidding me, look at this bass. Dude, okay, yeah, the fish here are, I mean, they're small, but they're not usually this small. Anyway, I guess I'll put this guy on the stringer too. There's a fish. Oh my goodness, it's another small one. Dude, I don't know, I mean, most of the time I've most of the times I've come here, it's been just a bunch of small bass. Um, typically they're like not quite this small, but whatever. This is our third fish of the day, and the sonar seems like it's working just fine so far, except for the traditional view has like uh, the first like two feet is just kind of yellow and purple. I don't really know why, like across the whole screen. So, I mean, it doesn't really affect it that much when you're in like deep water, but it still looks weird, especially like when you're in shallow water, but I will take that, another little bass, and I'll just throw him on the stringer. Oh wow, look at that. That is what the clear view is supposed to show. That's definitely some sticks down there. It's probably another little brush pile. That's a pretty nice view, and then yeah, that's probably another stick. That's kind of cool. There's a fish. He bit it right at the boat. He bit it a couple times. Oh, and he totally just threw my swim bait off. But uh, he bit it a couple times, and then um, I was still reeling in, and I saw him come bite it again. All right, well, maybe I just got lucky that one time when I caught crappie here. Um, it was kind of weird. Like, I'd, I've been fishing here for like three years, and I just at one time I caught like probably four or five crappie, um, which is about as many bass as I caught, so. I don't know, maybe we won't get, any, get into any uh, crappie today, but we're getting on to some small bass. All right, well, these little fish are breaking my Kitex super easily. So I think I'm going to switch this little Z-Man swim bait, which I used the other day and is way more durable uh, than those Kitex. There's a fish. Uh, first one on the Z-Man. That was actually really fast. Oh, and this one has a slash across its side. It looks like it's kind of fresh. Um, yeah, I'm not even gonna put that on the stringer. That's just kind of weird. I'm just gonna release this fish. I mean, maybe that's more of a reason to put him on a stringer. I don't know, I'm just gonna release him though. Anyway, there he goes. All right, I'm pulling up on what looks to be a pretty good spot. There's a giant tree that fell in the water. I bet there's a bunch of fish under there.
got one. First cast at the tree. Yeah, I bet there's a bunch of fish over here. Especially all these small ones, they like to stack up on cover like this. I mean, really any size bass will. All right, I'm just gonna release this one because it takes a minute to put them on the stringer. And uh, I bet there's more under there, so. There's one. It's kinda under the tree. It was under a side branch of that big tree. And yeah, this one's really small. I'm definitely putting him on the stringer. There's one. Ooh. Nah, he's not very big. He's still a small one. Man, this lake is way overpopulated with these tiny bass. It's a good thing I'm taking them out. Put this guy on the stringer too. And these little, you can, you can never really go wrong with fishing these little soft plastic swim baits because they pretty much just catch anything. Um, like I said earlier, uh, for whatever reason, there's no crappie today, but it's still getting these little bass. There's a fish. No way, there's a fish right here that tried to bite this swim bait. He was literally right there. No way, he hit it. Dude, these fish are kind of stupid. <laughs> he literally, like, just was looking at the swim bait. That actually happened the other day, though. I mean, maybe that, I don't know. Like, I had my, the other day, I just had my rod, like, laying on my boat, and the swim bait was just kind of on top of the water, and a fish, like, blew up on it. And this guy, I don't even know what I was doing. It was just kind of, oh, I just got an unstuck from a log, and as I was reeling it in, this guy, like, was looking at it. I think there was actually a, a couple of them. But yeah, these little swim baits are working well. It's another little guy, so definitely putting him on the stringer. Is that a fish? Oh my, it, it is a fish. I cast it over there a second ago and like immediately a fish hit it. And I did it again and uh, he hit it again. <laughs> this might be the best fish of the day. Oh. My line broke, that's weird. Uh, it broke right above the knot. I don't know why it broke. It must have been frayed or something, but at least it didn't break in the water. And yeah, this guy's still pretty small, but he's a little bit fat, and he's a little bit bigger than all the ones we've caught today, so I'm just gonna release him. Because there's a bunch of smaller ones that would be more worth getting rid of.